Hi, I'm Donna Babylon, and I'm an author and designer and sewing enthusiast. And today I'm going to show you two really, really fun projects that you can make for traveling. The first one I want to show you is a lingerie case. And I know it sounds extravagant, but it's really, really a neat little thing to take with you. I designed it so it has two pockets. So you can put things in one pocket and the other, so it's two-sided. And I added a fun little applique and ooh-la-la uh, to go with the lingerie uh, concept. Now, this all came about. I came, I saw this fabric and it was really inspiring. It has all these really cute feminine things. And I thought, ah, perfect for a lingerie bag. You can choose something like this or you can use other collections, but I fell in love with this. And the one thing that I want to do, I like to personalize things because I love to applique. Um, I added the words ooh la la. And the pattern is available um, on the website. website. There's a link to it. And it includes these letters. And the letters do come pre-cut. And they're also pre-fused. And I've already taken the paper backing off the back because these are so simple to do. So all you do is remove the paper backing and lay it down on your fabric it, wherever you want it to be and then press it in place and then stitch around it. And to do that, I do like to use tweezers. And I just find that by putting them down, it doesn't get all congested with your fingers. So you press it down, you lay it, uh, and, you, and you stitch around it, and you're ready to go. You stitch it then to your fabric. Now, the next thing I want to show you are all these fun little zippers that we were talking about, OK? And because I use a longer zipper than what you really need, and I want to show you how easy it is to shorten them. So here's the zippers that I'm using. And the first thing you want to do is keep it closed. And I sew these little tabs. Now, these little tabs help shorten it, but they also add a little design element to the bag as well. So you sew these tabs. And what you want to make sure is the edge of the fabric does not include the end uh, part of the zipper, because if you stitched on that, it would break. So you just put them in place, and you just stitch very slowly across the, um, the zipper teeth. And if you do it really slowly, it won't break uh, your needle. And I've done that here. Here's one already stitched, you can see. And then I need to do the other side. Now, the other side is a little bit more to it because you have to remember to pull the slide down. If you didn't and you sewed it shut, your slide would be up here, and this is not usable. So you pull the slide down. And then I always take a few hand stitches here. With I just have a needle and thread here. And I took a few hand stitches, and I closed it um, so it stays in place. So you do the same exact thing, though, with putting in the fabric. You put one piece of fabric here and one piece of fabric here. And then you stitch across it again, and you've just shortened your zipper. So here it is completed. And I've got both ends shortened, and I've also then pressed them to the side. Now, another thing that I like to do is uh, it to also, you need to eliminate this bulk, but I just cut off the zipper teeth like this. And then the other thing I like to do is take a piece of fusible webbing, and I just cut a little length, and I put it here between the two pieces of fabric. And I press it. And this keeps it, it gives it some stability, and it's not flopping around. And it just makes a really, really nice uh, finished piece. And here it is, both edges I've done. And it's all fused together. And then all you have to do is just trim this to make it uh, narrower, like I've done right here, just very, very simply. And I'm not cutting the length yet, because um, it just makes it easier to cut at the end uh, when you're sewing it all together to clean it all up. So it's a really neat edge. So it is a little bit longer than I need. Now, one thing with this uh, project, what I want you to do, you do two zipper ends, and you do like two halves of them. But what you want to make sure of is that one zipper goes one way, and the other zipper goes the other way. The reason this is is because when your uh, lingerie bag closes, the zipper tabs are not on top of each other, and it just closes neater. If you forget about that, don't worry, but um, it's a really nice little tip. But you can see how I've got this unit um, all completed. To complete this, then, here I am with the two uh, pieces of fabric. Here's the zipper that's been trimmed. And then I have two facings on it. And so you basically put your zipper down. You find the center of the zipper. And you can pin mark it or just uh, crease mark it. And the same thing with your fabric. And you match them. You match the centers to the centers like this. And then the other side, you put behind it right sides together. 
and then you're ready to stitch. Now, the one thing you do need to be aware of is this zipper, the zipper pull. You need to be aware of where that is. I like to start with it down a little bit and I'll come back to that as I stitch it. So we're gonna put these together again and I'm gonna take it over here to the machine. Now the machine already is set up with a zipper foot and um, so, and I have it on the right hand side. And so you're gonna put all of these layers together and you're gonna sew it with one seam. So let's start this down and I like to start with the needle down and I push the presser foot and we start sewing. Now sew slowly, don't rush this because you do want it to be neat and you don't want to reverse sew it. And we're gonna sew and I'm into the tape right now. And when we get down here, it's very, very smooth because the zipper uh, pull is out of the way, but we're gonna get to that zipper pull in a second. And what you do, what you need to do is stop, like right about here, take the zipper pull and pull it up. But let's raise the presser foot, get the zipper pull out of the way, and then you just continue sewing. Once you get this completed, you make two of them, and then you add it to the middle part of the bag right here. You have the top one and the bottom one, you sew it to the middle part. Then you put the, the front side on and you stitch it around and you have a complete lingerie bag. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do a travel neck pillow. Now the pattern for this is available, it's a free downloadable. And when you download it, it has two pieces of paper to it that you do have to connect. So you wanna cut it out on the hard, the dark black line. And then there's dots here that I've placed and you just match them up and tape it together. And that's all you need for the pattern. On the pattern, there's also a line that says, make sure it goes this way for the nap. So once you decide it, so I have the nap going this way, which means it's gonna be smooth coming down over my shoulders. So you place this on the fold and you pin it in place and you cut it out. Now, I only cut out one and I'm gonna show you why in a little bit because I've got a trick for you. I wanna uh, personalize it. I'm all about adding initials. And so what I did is uh, since this is a knit and I'm adding a woven fabric initial, I put a piece of interfacing on the back. And so, um, you wanna put the initial in place. Now these are all pre-cut and pre-fused, and like I said, 100% cotton fabric. And basically, they tell you not to iron the, uh, the stretchable fabric that much, but the great thing about the fusible that's used on this, you only need like three to five seconds and it holds in place. But I do like to use a press cloth, and so I would just press it in place, and then uh, I would applique it once it's done, it's all ready to go, and then I would just stitch around it and then just treat this as one. But let's go back to the trick. Okay, I said to cut out one, and it's because I, I cut out one and I stitch it to a square of fabric. I found that if you put the two together like this, it stays together better because it wants to jump around and I think you have more control on this. So you would just pin it around, right sides together. You wanna make sure the nap goes in the same direction that we talked about earlier. And this one I've already stitched around. And if it gets a little wonky like this, it might. Um, don't worry about it because this fabric is really forgiving. Now, one of the tricks though that you do need to do is use a walking foot. This is a really, really odd shaped looking tool, but it is great. And what it does is it moves both of the fabric layers together. And so it matches up, it makes it go easier. And it's really important when you're using slinky fabric like this that it works. The other thing that I do like to do as I'm stitching is I like to use a stiletto. It does help as you're going through um, this and you just kind of keep pushing it through. But you wanna sew all the way around the pattern you leave it uh, ready open uh, for turning. And I do suggest that you double stitch this uh, U section because that's what's getting, gonna get a lot of wear and tear as you use it. And here it is all cut out. Now the other thing that you do need to do is in this curved area, you do wanna take out some notches and that's just removing some fabric so that you have a smoother neckline like this and you just cut little tiny notches all the way around. And then through the opening, you just start turning. And then you need to stuff it. And stuffing is, um, this is just a real fluffy, soft, it was a really high quality, it was not an inexpensive one. You don't need a lot of this stuffing for these pillows, but I do suggest that you get one that's really, really nice and soft. And one of the things I do like to do is I like to tease it, just like you're teasing hair, and then I just very carefully take a clump of it and put it in. So let's just get this churned out really quickly. 
and then you stuff it and you have a great, great project that you can give to people, give to yourself, and you can really, really travel in style.